Indeed, good morning. If you're tuning in, this is in the headlines right here on KBC Channel 1, and I'm Regina Manyara. So before we get, or rather get to talk about what has been making headlines in matters of people and politics with my colleague Victor on law, let's just do a quick sample of what we have on our various dailies being the 16th of May 2022, a date that has been set as a deadline by IEBC for various parties to name uh, their running mate. So yesterday there it was confirmed that Matera MP Rigadi Gashagwa is going to be running side by side uh, with Deputy President William Ruto and uh, Kenya Kwanzaa ahead of the August poll. So who will it be uh, later on today from 8 a.m. actually? Uh, the Azimio camp will be unveiling Raila Odinga's running mate. Who will it be? A lot of reactions there elicited by various quarters. I have a copy of the star with me, so let me just skim through before I uh, pave way for my colleagues who have their various dailies with them. So the front page is all about Martyr's politics. Your guess is as good as mine. We're talking about the unveiling of uh, Rigadi Gashagwa as Deputy President uh, William Ruto's running mate. So Kenya Kwanzaa, there was a lot of horse trading and intense negotiations that we can attest to we can attest to especially for journalists who are uh, uh, you know covering that it was um, likened to when we were waiting to find uh, you know the white smoke uh, when we're getting the roman catholic pope so to speak so it was regarding ashagwa camps vic uh, viciously fought for a post as race narrowed down to either kindiki kizure or regarding ashagwa details are going to be coming up in not too long so 17 hour of intrigues that gave Rigadi the deputy president post that's a big read in this particular daily also other stories that are make, making headlines and as far as this particular daily is concerned is that ahead of the afri cities that is set to take place this week kisumu hotels are fully booked that is indeed a good boost especially for the hospitality industry remember that the tourism sector was hard hit when you know global travel eased or rather there was a dip in global travel owing to the COVID-19 pandemic and the domestic market came in to just give the industry a push. So indeed having the Afri cities taking place in Kisumu County is bound to change the tide in as far as the hospitality industry is concerned down there in Kisumu. Then also on matters of food security, starvation fears. Now poor March May rains spell doom for food security. Remember over 32 countries, I mean counties have been named as drought prone in the country. What does that say about our food security given it's part of the big four agenda? Matters of climate change uh, and delay in rain. This is putting us in a crooks, so to speak. On Martyr's security, a story that has been captured by mainstream media as well as social media is that three suspects have been arrested by the DCI over a student's murder. Matters of gender-based violence continue rocking the airwaves. That is just but a summary of what this particular daily has given presidents this Monday morning, being the 16th of May 2022, including now that Kalonzo Musioka has threatened to bolt out of Azimio if Raila, if Raila does not name him as his deputy. But we will soon be finding out 8 a.m. All eyes are fixed at the KRCC. Victor. All right. So on the front page of the standard here, why Ruto went against MPs to pick Gashagwa, Taraka Nithi, Senator Kithure Kindiki was most favorite for running mate with... Um, with an internal UDA vote placing him away, uh, away ahead. But after a night of intrigues, DP went for loyalty and numbers. I'll give you more details on why Ruto picked Gashagwa. Malaria vaccine offers hope for families, uh, to families. That was on the front page as well as revealed how Uhuru Raila fixed Kalonzo. That is what's on the front page of the standard newspaper. On the inner pages here, girl who exalt in KCPE has goats for lack of school fees. Now, father says that Mount Mwanza says that uh, he can only afford to feed his family, but no school fees. The girl's dream is to become a lawyer to help families solve land dispute. That's on the second page. 
uh, third page of the standard here. And moving on quickly, how Uhuru Raila fixed Kalonzo in Azimio La Umoja agreement? It's uh, the parties required to give 90-day notice to withdraw from the coalition. The deal committed parties to a strenuous and uh, punishing dispute resolution mechanism. And that is why it is... Uh, it's going to be an, an uphill task for Kalonzo Musioka to pull out of the coalition. The deal signed by Azimio La Umoja One Kenya parties on March 12th at KICC grounds locked the partners in the coalition until three months after the election. Now, signatories to the deal, including Kalonzo Musioka's wiper, cannot leave the coalition six months to the elections or three months after winning. Uh, uh, after without running afoul of the law so this is because um, what has it that uh, wiper leader and wiper party are set to go to court this morning to exit azimio la umoja movement and the deed of agreement signed on march 12th and obtained uh, says that parties may give a 90-day notice to withdraw from the coalition which now takes them beyond the election date so how the courts are going to interpret this is going to be a matter of interest having in mind that uh, at uh, 11 according to what honorable ludinga said yesterday at kamkunji grounds is that uh, he will be mentioning his running mate at 11 a.m at the KICC grounds. Now, intrigues that preceded, preceded Ruto's hard decision on running mate. Now, these are some of the things that Ruto uh, went for. One, he was looking for loyalty, experience, uh, somebody who's a go-getter. He was looking for numbers, consistency, uh, an orator, somebody who is articulate, um, fearless, a good mobilizer, and finally, someone who is firm. Nine points. And according to him, the Shagwa scored the highest. The Shagwa choice leaves UDA with no candidate for Madira MP. So for, um, for the next few months, he's going to double up as the member of parliament or this is it. Deputy President William Ruto's United Democratic Alliance will seek a revision of its Madira parliamentary seat ticket holder for the August 9th polls. UDA Secretary General, that is Ms. Veronica Maina, said that the party would process the revision from today, working with the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, uh, IBC. She said that revision of party nomination nominees was still possible in the circumstances that were beyond the entries, uh, entity's control. So they are going to revise that so that they can have a member of parliament. Now that Rikade uh, Kashagwa has been picked as the presumptive deputy president ahead of the August 9th polls. Finally, UDA forms campaign teams in nine regions, which was articulated by deputy president, who are going to steer different campaigns in the region that in the Western Kenya, the Upper Eastern Coast region, etc., etc. And yes, as I said, Raila took name, running mate, as Kalonzo plus to exit Azimio. How is it going to pan out is a matter of interest. No speculations at this particular point, a lot was said. Jen, what do you have? Uh, most of those stories have uh, also been covered here on the front page of the Daily Nation, starting with the main read, Ruto's biggest gamble yet. That is how they refer to this particular story. Um, celebration, dance and revulsion, greet, pick. They go on to describe um, the... Let me just read the way they've captioned here regarding uh, Gashagwa. They describe him as an astute mobilizer who boasts uh, deep pockets, a ruthless man when it comes to campaign, and a die-in-the-wool loyalist. Loyalty, again, is a term that I heard has been used to describe him there on the standard. Again, they go on to cover this story across five pages, looking at his role and, uh, you know, what he stands to bring in the coalition, given he has been selected as the running mate. Here they tackle the question on how the DP settled on Rigadi for running mate. They also go on to look at the Moy era politics that shaped Gashagua and the root of friendship. Um, further on... They go on to look at the mixed reactions as Ruto picks Gashagwa as his running mate. And finally, Raila to name a deputy today as Wiper threatens to walk out. How all this plays out in regards to the naming of deputy uh, running mates rather.
Away from that, um, there's a story concerning Mike Sonko. Sonko stars Coast Revolt as leaders in the coastal region um, are asking people not to vote for a reject. And they are all ganging up against uh, former Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko. Here they go on to say the quote-unquote skunk who was hounded out of office in Nairobi on mismanagement and graft accusations has taken his popularism to Mombasa where he is quickly gaining both acceptance uh, acceptance and uh, disapproval in equal measure. Now UDA and ODM politicians want him to be stopped. And remember, uh, Mike Sonko is running on a wiper ticket, but now the leaders in Mombasa are asking their people, how dare you support a reject? Okay? Away from that, the other story is in regards to the CBC and especially so junior high transition. It is a matter that has had a lot of parents and teachers as well as other education stakeholders on edge concerning how it is going to be rolled out because here they go on to say that there is no clarity on where the additional classes will come from. Teachers say they already filled what they had built with extra students from the Form 1 intake that has... Um, just been concluded but with no concise policy on how pupils will be elected and admitted in their preferred schools this new curriculum creation is threatening to become the weakest link in the system questions around the transition into junior high and especially so next year when there will be a double intake that is a form one and also junior high but we have seen at the cs come out to assure um all the stakeholders along the value chain that all these factors have been considered and have been prepared for. But I will be giving you details as per what more has been captured in regards to this story. But in the meantime, Doreen. All right, so why Ruto finally settled on Madira and Key for deputy post? I mean, it's just obvious that all the dailies today will be having this particular story, at least given the fact that this has been the conversation since Saturday as the day that it had been set for Kenya Kwanzaa to announce the running mate up until when they did that yesterday. And again, today we expect Azimio to also announce the running mate, given the fact that today is actually the deadline being the 16th of May after the IEBC pushed it from 28th to today. So... This article well highlights why the deputy president uh, settled on Madira MP. Remember that there was the push and pull between uh, uh, Gashagwa and Kindiki, and also going by what political pundits are saying, that perhaps Kindiki would have been uh, the best choice, given the fact that he is well-spoken when you look at his academic credentials. But ideally, at the end of the day, the question of loyalty, the question of votes, uh, this is part of what made Madira, uh, Madira MP Gashagwa to actually back that particular position as the running mate for Kenya Kwanzaa. So that is also part of what is coming out on that particular article. And then also we have, uh, just as I mentioned, the fact that uh, Azimio Coalition, as it was mentioned yesterday during the rally in Kamukunji, Raila Odinga is set to name the running mate today at 11. So again, all eyes will be at KICC to see who will carry the day when it comes to Azimio Laomoja. And remember that three names had already been submitted to him by the Noah Wekesa-led team that is... Um, Martha Karua, there's Kalonzo Musioka, and then there was Peter Kenneth. So amongst these three, who really is going to carry the day? That's where all eyes will be today at 11 a.m. And even as that is happening, Kalonzo threatens to seek official divorce from Azimio, citing the fact that the ongoing talks that they had been having on settling on Kalonzo Musioka's running mate looks like this is not part of what the coalition is settling for. And they're just saying that what they really agreed on, even before the NDC, that was around March, is that Kalonzo was supposed to be um, the running mate, but it looks like this conversations haven't been going on well and so the wiper party seeks to divorce from Azimio Laomoja but again remember as part the agreement looks like you cannot leave the coalition six months to the general election right now we're speaking about three months to the general election. So again, how will the courts decide on this if at all they're actually heading over to court as they mentioned, that being today. And away from matters politics, right now schools are struggling with congestion in classes as well as dorms. This is after the ministry announced the 100% transition from um, primary to secondary schools. And now as it stands out, is becoming a tricky balance for principals to just try and see how they're accommodating these students. Going by what we have here is that principal now have to improvise to accommodate the high number of Form 1s. It actually says that in most of these public school, uh, schools, a single classroom accommodate 
about 80 learners. You can imagine that just a single classroom are having to accommodate at least 80 learners. So now it turns out that principal are having a, principals are having a headache in trying to accommodate um, learners in the schools. And lastly, expressway poised to revolutionize the city transport. This is after that test was done on Saturday and already opened to the public. Uh, this road that is set to, uh, you know, make the city look different try to also make kenya as a country look different but what is just also coming out as it pertains to um this expressway is that what is being mentioned is that there's going to be three modes of payment that is the electronic toll there's the manual um manual toll collection and the cash so as it stands out and pesa as of now as it stands out it's not going to be a mode of transport but they're exploring that and also what is coming out is that this particular road is going to be operated and managed by moja express for <clears throat> 27 years remember that this particular road was constructed under what we call the public private partnership so it just simply means that also when when you look at the toll fee that kenyans will be paying it simply means that this particular money is supposed to go back to those that uh you know give the, the country the money to construct the road as well as also try to ensure there's proper maintenance and operation of this road so this is why also the toll fee is being um, imposed on kenyans to ensure that they pay this as they use the expressway regina Indeed, uh, that brings a cap into matters in the headlines there. Remember, further details will be available, especially on our website, in regarding to what is happening in the political scene. And we welcome your feedback on Twitter at KBC Channel 1. Well, before we get into the details and speak matters politics, we are going to be having a very candid conversation and we invite your participation. Maybe let me throw it back to Victor Olo to just give us a quick summary of what we'll be looking at in the next conversation. Victor. Absolutely. And uh, not long from now, we'll be heading cross crossing over to Radio Taifa, where a uh, spokesperson, that is State House spokesperson, Kanze Dena, will be articulating the government's projects and she'll be having that discussion from our sister station there. But I think um, for importance, did you know that uh, Somalia also held their the elections? elections? Yes. Yesterday. And um, it's said that uh, Somalia's former leader, Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, has been elected president after a final vote that was only open to the country's MP. So he defeated the current president, Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo, mm. who has been in office since 2017. Um, the ballot was limited to Somalia's 300 and 28 MPs due to security concerns over holding a wider election and one of them did not cast a vote. So Mr. Far, uh, Mr. Mohamud received 214 votes, defeating Mr. Farmajo who won with 110 votes. So three MPs are reported to have spoiled their ballot. So we have a new president in Somalia and Somalia um, they have been coming to Kenya for quite some time. Mr. Farmajo has been frequenting. Uh, Mr. Farmajo has been visiting State House for quite some time, you know, seeking counsel, advice, guidance, and even for diplomatic connections with Kenya. He's been a guest. Jen. Absolutely. And, you know, we just... This is one of the... Um, things that bind us as Africans. When it comes to election, I think this is something that cuts across the African uh, political landscape. Elections are always a sensitive time and for it to actually just happen smoothly and there is a transition that is also smooth. It is something that should be celebrated and of course, creating more ties across the African continent and hoping we we'll get to a time where we will be able to do business without all the limiting policies that are there within the, uh, the continent. And this starts with these bilateral ties that are being made between countries. All right. Well, so, time for us to take a break. And when we come back, we still have got much more after this. <laughs> 